little lesson on this um, etude by Giuliani. Um, this is an octave, um, a lesson in octaves in G major. And uh, it comes from my 10 Classical Etudes ebook, which you can download. There's a link under the video for that on Werner Guitar Editions. But this one, in terms of the overall collection, is more of an, an exercise than it is an etude, although there's musical aspects to it that are really nice as well. But it's also one of the most challenging pieces in the book. Well, for sure. Um, I mean, trying to get through the video here is like... <laughs> Um, I have to do take after take because um, there's so many opportunities for, for error and the notes just keep coming at you, right? You really have to know your octave shapes, but you also have to be constantly um, using two, like two finger, finger independence at all times to get these chord shapes. Um, I think the first thing I'll say is that play this at any tempo. Um, don't feel inclined to get it up to a really high speed. Practicing this at any tempo will be really, really good for you. So um, don't be too concerned about the speed. I would practice it in two ways. First way, as block chords. Or block octaves, I should say. Solid form. Just so you learn the shapes, that's the main point. And, and also just like focus on how the groups will work in the context of finger independence. And then the second way that you should go over it is to um, play one note to the next. So instead of blocking two notes at a time, it's really like this note, then this one, 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 then this one. Then this one. Making sure that that it's legato from every note to the next one. And that brings us into the, the other issue of this piece is that um, you could go through and make like perfect fingerings for every bar of this piece, but then you're gonna be changing positions constantly. So sometimes it's better to just stay in position and jump the fingers around. I mean, Giuliani's fingering, um, he just jumped fingers around. Sometimes it wasn't efficient at all. So although I've refingered a few sections to be um, as legato as possible, um, it's I think that it's still very important that you sometimes just stay in position. Um, where would be a good example of this? So for example, um, So in like that passage, I tried to avoid one sixteenth note going to the next one with the same finger in the left hand. Instead, I just kind of change fingers every once in a while. But there's a few parts where you, you just can't get away from it too much. Um, for example, in the fourth line, I just stay in second position there, despite how difficult it is at speed. Whoops. Um, because it's, sometimes you just be all over the place all the time. So just staying in position sometimes can be very useful to you. So practice the piece slowly. Practice it in those two different ways, um, in solid form and in broken form, listening very carefully on the broken form to be legato from one note to the next. Um, and then there's not much else to say. I mean, there's some pretty tricky jumps in this piece, like on when it jumps up to the D there. Um, of course you can use the strings as guides, so that that's really helpful, so not taking your fingers off the string. And then just like looking at where your first finger has to go on the guitar and just going right to that spot. So you can keep it secure in that way. There's, there's other ways you could do it. You could like... string but then I mean you're just getting into like this very um, very careful style of playing and, and one of the points of this etude is just to learn octave shapes but if you were really trying to get it up to speed you might want to consider like revising some of the fingerings to like make the maximum impact for you I actually find my fingerings pretty 
easy overall, but um, you could definitely tweak it to whatever's comfortable for you. There's so many options. There's no perfect answer to some of the problems when you're playing octaves. But one last thing I'll say is that, as I was saying at the beginning, play it at any speed because it's good for you because this is such great finger independence. Like your fingers are just moving all over. If you've ever played like exercises from pumping nylon, like um, Odair's favorite drill, um, this exercise is essentially that in a study. So you just so much finger independence, a little bit of stretches here and there, some big shifts that you can work on. I mean, there's an endless possibility of things that you can work on in this piece. And I think it's just really healthy for you and a real good challenge, but don't get discouraged by it because it is difficult and it's certainly difficult to play from start to finish fast without mistakes. I mean, that's really difficult. I would put that way in the advanced category. So take it slow and just realize that this is a real healthy and good thing for you to do. It'll make you a better guitarist and don't get discouraged by it at all. And then, um, also, just work on the other etudes in the book. Don't feel inclined to like finish this one so much as just practice it every day and, and move on to the, the next thing. And once you get a handle over the technique, you can start adding a little bit of... A little bit of shaping to the lines, just a little bit, just to make it mu more on the musical side rather than just an exercise. You don't want it to just be an exercise. You do want it to be an etude that mixes musicality with technique. That's the whole point of etudes, so don't forget that point. So, uh, like I said, um, have a fun time doing it because there's learning these shapes and getting comfortable with them is all part of the fun. And then um, the next video will be covering the final etude in the book, which is Sor's uh, B minor etude, which is a, a really beautiful musical one.